All right, in this video, I'll be talking about a few applications of double integrals, uh, namely finding areas of regions and finding volumes of regions bounded by surfaces. So let me begin with uh, the idea behind how we find areas of regions. Um, so areas of regions in the plane Well, the way we evaluate these is to think of them as, um, so let me give a name to a region. I have some region in the plane. I'll call this R. And, and the area of this region is in fact equal to a double integral over the region of the function of the function just one. So this may seem slightly strange. We're integrating the function one over the region, and that's um, actually equal to the area of R. But the reason this makes sense, there are a couple ways to explain it. Um, one, you could think, think of this as the volume under the function constantly equal to one over the region R, so that would look something like, you know, I have this strange shape on the xy plane. The function 1 over this region is just the function that's um, always equal to z equals 1. It looks like this. And this is computing this volume under it. So it may seem strange to say that um, the volume under the function equal to 1 over the region gives you an area, but it's just the idea you have all of the cross sections are the same and your region has a height of 1. The other way to think of it is that the way we approximate this with Riemann sums is by, is by cutting it up into a bunch of rectangles. And a way we can approximate this is just by summing up uh, areas of rectangles that sit inside the region. So if our, if the way we partition this rectangle is fine enough, there will be uh, lots of tiny rectangles inside the region R, and we just add up the areas of those. So this would be something like delta xi, delta yj, but we'd only care about um, i rectangles over i and up j that actually sit inside um, so I'd only care about ij such that maybe our sample point sample point in one of the rectangles is inside the region. So that's that's a brief explanation of why finding areas of regions it is just a matter of integrating. It's just a matter of computing a double integral of the function one over the region. So let me give an example. So suppose we want to find the area enclosed by the curves y equals x squared and y equals x plus 2. Uh, let me draw this region. So the line y equals x plus 2 starts at 2 and has a slope of 1. And y equals x squared is this parabola. And we're finding this area. Uh, we should maybe figure out what these points of intersection are. That's just a matter of seeing when x squared is equal to x plus 2. We figure that out or just make some good guesses, you'll see that um, they intersect when x is negative 1. Because if I plug negative 1 in here, I get 1. If I plug negative 1 in here, I get 1. And they also intersect when x equals 2. So let me call this region R. And like I said, the area is equal to this double integral of the function 1 
over the region R. And this may not seem like a very useful thing, but the idea is that now we have this unified framework for computing areas. And the idea now is to turn this into some kind of iterated integral. We're integrating the function 1 over the region R, but the way to think of that is we have the function equal to 1 when you're in the region, but it's equal to 0 when you're outside the region. So in setting up an iterated integral, so let's see, the x values go from negative 1 to 2, and for each given x value, this function that's equal to 1 on the region and 0 outside the region, well, the best way to think of it is that we're integrating the function 1, and the bounds on our integral will have to go from x squared to x plus 2. So for each x value, um, we have this function that's equal to 1 in the region and 0 outside. One way to represent that is that we only want to integrate the function when it's equal to 1. When it's equal to 0, we don't, there's nothing to integrate. So it's just a matter of setting the appropriate bounds. So when I'm at some x value, I'm going from x squared to x plus 2. And now this is a legitimate iterated integral. Here I'm just integrating 1, so uh, the answer you get will be x plus 2 minus x squared. And then I'm integrating this with respect to x. And if you go through this, what do you get? You get x squared over 2 plus 2x minus x cubed over 3 from negative 1 to 2, which is 6 minus 8 thirds minus um, which is this, and uh, well, I won't simplify that here. You get some number. So now I'd like to talk about another application, which is finding, finding the volume, or finding volumes between surfaces. And let me do this with a really simple example just to make the ideas clear. So say I want to find the volume enclosed by the plane x plus y plus z equals 1 and the three coordinate planes. what this looks like is this and this plane will sort of sit like this so you're kind of finding the volume under this triangle but above the xy plane but the trick is that now we have this function z equals 1 minus x minus y and what we're really doing is integrating this over this triangle on the xy plane. So that triangle is really this. So the volume enclosed by this plane and the three coordinate planes is going to be the double integral of the function over the triangle, which I'll call t.
And the way we integrate over this triangle is, let's see, the x goes from 0 to 1, and for each given x value, the y values go from 0 to 1 minus x, because this line is y equals 1 minus x. So the way we set up the integral is um, we're going from 0 to the y value there, which is 1 minus x. So the volume is really this iterated integral. And I won't go through the details now, but if, if you go through it, you get 1 6.